The Ben Coley Podcast. Hey, you're listening to The Ben Coley Podcast. Welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, And this is where... I talk about all things music, really. So my favourite album of the past week, my new favourite song that I'm loving, fresh new artists, because there's so many great under-the-radar, undiscovered artists out there. And also, I talk about some of the latest music news as well. It's basically, I'd say, a snapshot of the past week or so in music. So if you're like me and you love all sorts of songs, you love all sorts of genres, consider this maybe a quick pit stop where you can touch base with some different musical styles and also collect some new tunes as well whilst you're at it a little bit of a preamble before i start um if you've got any new suggestions of any artists or songs that you want to run past me uh please hit me up let me know uh what what they are just get in touch on any of my social media so that's uh, at ben coley 97 on twitter or underscore ben coley on insta All of the information for all of the artists that I've spoken about today are going to be in the description section on the podcast page. So you can go and check out all of their stuff. Go and follow them. Go and download their music. A bit of a boring one. It sucks to talk about it, I know. But copyright, mm, um, I can't play um, because of podcasting and copyright laws, so on and so forth. I can't play any of the signed music that I'm talking about. But um, I have reached out to all of the unsigned bands that I feature in every episode and I've received full copyright permission from them. They've basically given me full permission to use snippets of their songs for some of the signed artists that I'll be talking about. Um, I'm going to be doing some sort of timestamps, a few little time checks here and there. I'll say, check this out at two minutes into this song. And perhaps for your own understanding, it might be best to pause me, feel free to do that, and then go and listen to the song and then come back to the podcast. So you know what I'm going on about. It would probably make things a little bit easier to follow, easier to understand, and it will mean that you get the most out of it as well. Okay, it's time for some under the radar, undiscovered, unsigned artists that I've been listening to recently that are amazing. You need to check them out. First up is Moses. These guys are a four-piece, they're from London, they're a rock band, they're unsigned, and uh, it features Victor, Matthew, Rory, and James. These guys are really good, and they're getting great exposure as well. They've already racked up about 10,000 views, more than 10,000 views actually, yeah, more than 10,000, on their latest Spotify single called You Need L, which is what you're going to hear a bit of in a minute. And they've already featured on John Kennedy's show called Exposure on Radio X. So they're getting some serious airplay on a big national station. They're very much tapping into sort of an early Britpop sound, I'd say, that kind of, kind of blur. That's that's what they're going for. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a blur sort of sound, but it doesn't, they're putting their own unique twist on it. It doesn't sound ripped off in any way whatsoever. The vocalist has an unbelievable range. Um, I, I don't know how he sings like that. I can't sing like that. I can't really sing that well, to be honest. But the vocalist is insane. When I first heard their track, actually, uh, called You Need Al, I, I genuinely thought it was a female singing at first because I was only half listening. And I mean that in the best possible way because his range is ridiculous. He will sing quite low down or in just sort of his comfortable range in the verse and then he'll sing falsetto in the choruses and it's got so much power behind it and confidence. It's it's cool. It's really cool to hear. It's nice to hear a front man in an up and coming band that's got that sort of confidence. Kind of the confidence of someone like uh, Brandon Flowers. It's that it's sort of like attitude and swagger in his voice. It's insane to hear. So check this out. It's the chorus from uh, their single called You Need L. You'll see what I mean about the range. When you're Good stuff. They're really exciting. And they're writing very positive, uplifting music, which we all need a little bit of. Second band, uh, Mauritia. They're a five-piece alt-rock band from Kingston upon the Hull. And I'm really excited about these guys. Not because I think they're they're not reinventing the wheel. Um, they're not they're not kind of doing anything super out of the ordinary. They're just writing tunes that work, and they're writing tunes that, quite frankly, you could stick onto any radio station, Radio 1, Radio X, wherever, and it would sound sick. They're so good. Listen to their new single called Body Talk. This is one of my favorite parts of it. So pull me close now, because I know you feel it too, and when I'm with you, my heart beats racing. 
It's, it's, it's very Tudor Cinema Club, isn't it? That's kind of the sound that they're tapping into. That kind of disco-esque alt-rock sound. It just works. Nice use of synth in there. And like what you just heard, some really busy guitar work and bass work as well. The guys know how to play. Great vocalist. And right now, you can check out some of the chorus. This is um, this is a hook. Well, this is the main hook from their chorus. And it's so catchy. They know what they're doing. I absolutely love those guys. Um, okay, so Tom Dunn is the third and final unsigned or under the radar artist that I'm gonna be talking about. And if there's anything I want you to take away from this podcast, it's, just, it's Tom Dunn, to be honest. It is Tom Dunn, he's so good. Um, I'm really excited about this guy. His latest single called Violet is so sick. Check this out. I mean, vocally, it is just through and through Tom Mish and Jordan Reiki. If those two were to have a love child, it, it would come out as being Tom Dunn. It's got such an amazing, soulful quality to it. You can tell as well, he's just, he is there all day. He is so comfortable in his range, in his voice. It, it's just so, it's so beautiful. It is a sexy voice, Tom. I've, I've got a lot of time for that. Listen to this part of the verse as well. It's like it's something from the second verse. And it's, I, I just love the rim shot acoustic kit. The beat is really cool. See what you think. Also, there's a third part of this song that I really love. Uh, there's some real complex synth work that's going on. It almost sounds hypnotic at some points. The guy really knows how to get these complex ideas and condense them down into a short song and make it sound really badass. At the moment as well, he's working alongside S.G. Lewis. Um, S.G. Lewis, he, he's a dude, he's a dude. He's already worked with people like Laney and Ray Black, that's insane. There's quite a lot to take from each and every one of those three unsigned artists, Moses, Mauritia, and Tom Dunn. All of the links for the music and social media of all the artists are gonna be featured on the description page. They'll all have live dates coming up over the Christmas period, no doubt. Just check them out, they're seriously exciting. Okay, so the news. Uh, I'm just gonna touch on a few little things. Um, <laughs> firstly, God. Everyday Life, which is the new Coldplay album, has uh, beaten Robbie Williams to number one. And apparently Robbie Williams is quite upset about that, or at least in an interview that he had the other week, he was saying that he'd be gutted if Coldplay beat him to number one. How could you be gutted? I'm sorry. If I, if I was anyone, I think if I was beaten to the number one spot on the album charts by Coldplay, I think I'd be honored. I'd be like, yeah, I've come second or I've come third, but Coldplay have beaten me. No offense to Robbie, I, I love Robbie, don't get me wrong. Swing when you're winning, what an album. But the Christmas Present, which is his, his latest album, it, it, it sucks, it's not good. Um, the reason why I say that is just cheesy. Like, I, I know that Christmas is cheesy, and I'm not the biggest fan of Christmas songs, but it, it just, it doesn't work. And also, uh, I, I know I shouldn't compare because they're two different artists, but you kind of have to compare. The fact that his album, Robbie Williams' latest Christmas album, just isn't as good as Michael Bublé's. It's not, it's not. Michael Bublé has got Christmas in the bag. Robbie just doesn't. And he's got a song <laughs> on the on the album called, um, oh, what's it called? Bad Sharon, that's what it's called, that he does with Tyson Fury. Why? <laughs> Why has he got Tyson Fury on a song? Of all the people that Robbie Williams must have in his, in his speed dial, that he could call up anyone. He gets Tyson Fury up, and if you listen to Bad Sharon, you'll you'll hear Tyson Fury saying, 
Merry Christmas! Go to bed, you sleepy dossers! It, it just sounds so gimmicky. Anyway, I could go on all night. I'm, I'm just not feeling it. Uh, there's a new Travis Scott that's coming out, which is really exciting. My internet's just gone, so I can't actually get the article up. Um, but he's bringing out a new album, which is apparently dropping in December, or at least material from the album is dropping soon. And he's gonna have his latest track on there as well, called Highest in the Room, which... Definitely wasn't my favourite Travis uh, song that's come out recently. I think there's there's multiple songs off Astro World that I thought were better than the Heist in the Room. But Heist in the Room was still good. And the music video is insane. He's dropping a new album. I think um, it's part of his new label that he's got. And he's featuring quite a, new, a few new artists on there as well. If my internet didn't go, that would help. Um, as well, this isn't really news. Um, but it's my kind of last little thing to leave you with is that Paul McCartney's headlining Glasto, which everyone's heard about, um, but it's kind of, li it's leading me on nicely to talk about who else could be joining Paul McCartney. I think Paul McCartney's headlining the uh, the Saturday night at Glasto, so that means Friday and Sunday still needs to be filled. And, um, well, I've screenshotted some, let's get it up, I've screenshotted some odds. Um, so if you were a betting man, here's what the odds would be for the next headliner of Glasto. Um, Fleetwood Mac was up there, five to four, but I think those guys have dropped out because their fees were too high. Come on, guys, lower your fees. It's Glastonbury, for God's sake. Elton John is two to one, which is, you know, it's looking likely. That would make sense as well because he's been really busy lately. He's um, he's had his new autobiography called Me that he's been he's been branding around. And also he's had that latest film of his called Rocket Man as well. And Oasis are on there, 25 to one. Wow. It's not going to happen though, is it? Over the past week, there haven't been many albums that have grabbed me. Um, but there's one album that stood out, and that's Oshi. Um, and it's an album called A Conversation With Myself. Uh, it came out on the Friday Just Gone, that was the 29th of November. Oshi's a young up-and-comer. He produces and writes his own really eclectic mix of experimental hip-hop. It's got some electronic music in there as well. There's an awful lot of contemporary soul and R&B influences that he infuses throughout all of his music as well that comes across really nicely. He's kind of, he fuses them together in, in a very nice way, in a sophisticated way. It doesn't come across as he's just got one genre and another genre and bolted them together. He gained a lot of popularity in 2014. He released quite a few remixes of songs from Justin Timberlake, also from Justin Bieber, and more recently, he's, re he's remixed the one and only Kali Uchis. Go and check out Kali Uchis if you haven't done so already. She's, she's incredible, but he's been remixing her. And that brought him to quite a lot of prominence, sort of in that scene, and a huge artist picked him up, and that was Lord. So, of course, I'm sure many of you know Lord. Royals, Royals. She picked him up. She sort of has been singing his praises. So, obviously, that's drawn quite a few eyes on him. Even so, he hasn't got that many Facebook likes or sort of he hasn't got a huge, huge following. I think he's got about 40,000 likes on Facebook, which, you know, by, by many artist standards, perhaps isn't that much. But either way, for a guy of such a young age, he's doing so well for himself. He draws an awful lot of similarities with a Washington-based producer that I stumbled across called Sango. Go and check out Sango. And if you're into that sort of music, you've probably heard of him already. But if if not, if you like what you um, hear when you come to listen to Oshi, Sango will be right up your street as well. It's kind of drawn in many of the same influences. So yeah, this album is um, it's really good. It's really good. In terms of the substance of the lyrics, he's drawing off an awful, awful lot of adolescent themes, I'd say. One of the main themes he draws off is falling out of love, something that obviously we can all relate to. He also talks about other topics like being nervous on the first date and trying to make a girl that you're really nervous to meet laugh throughout the whole night. And also coming of age as well, discovering yourself, maturing. So it's, in terms of lyrics, it's really interesting to listen to. His first EP was very much dance-based. It was a lot more of an emphasis on the beat that was being brought to the fore, as opposed to now, where it's a lot more subtle production techniques and he's making more use of ambient synth work as well. So, A Conversation With Myself, I'd say is his first full-length album. I'm going to pick a couple of tracks that I really love and then talk about the things in the album that I think perhaps hold it back a little bit. A track that I loved off this, really loved, was track seven. It's called Tightrope. If you go to 36 seconds into that song, into track seven now, 
you'll hear some amazing vocals in the chorus. And that's what really elevates this song for me. It kind of lifts it to a point where it stands out from other tracks in the track listing, which is no mean feat considering that there's 13 tracks throughout this whole album. You'll hear these thick layered vocals that really lifts up the chorus. And it reminds me a lot of Bon Iver. It's kind of these real densely packed harmonies, almost these shouted vocals, but the vocals don't last for long. It's not like they've got reverb or any bleed on them where it kind of echoes or anything like that. He'll sing the vocals and then the sound will cut off straight away. But it makes for a really nice dynamic and expressive sound in the chorus. It's such a watertight chorus. The chorus is so good. I'm sure you'll agree as soon as you listen to that part. The vocals are supported by these really muddy, low down synth chords and a real stripped back drum beat as well. Um, and then it's only two minutes, this song. So it's really simple. It follows a very linear structure. When you listen to Tightrope, it's literally just verse, chorus, verse, chorus, basically. There's not really much going on outside of that. And I'm sure you'll agree, production-wise, there isn't much going on. There's not loads of instruments and it's not, um, it's not completely blown out of proportion, but it's really cool to see that Oshi or Oshi is doing loads with a little. He's genuinely making what is a really thick, beautiful sounding full song out of, sort of very few ideas, I'd say. A second track that I love, check this out now, track eight, and listen to the start. It's got gentle, ambient synth swells as soon as you press play on this. And the kind of it's kind of like gently pulsating synth sounds, kind of like lapping waves. That's what, that's what I thought when I listened to it. Lapping waves. It's like being at the beach and it's joined by these kind of syncopated digital effect sounds. I'm, I really don't know how we created this sound. It's, it's really weird when you listen to it. It's a difficult one to describe. I think maybe it was like a guitar sound that he's got that he's perhaps reversed or something like that. I kind of hear like a metallic guitar strum sort of in there. That's the sort of effect I'm getting. And it's just got these really weird footsteps in the background, like like someone that's in high heels just walking down the pavement. But it kind of it kind of really works. It creates this really uncertain start. You're not really sure where the song's going. And then it opens up a little bit more. Head over to two minutes into the song now. Two minutes, drop yourself in there. And just after that first chorus, there's this really awesome pitch shift vocal. And this is a really great example of what I think Oshi can do really well, is he clearly pays a lot of attention to detail and he'll only focus on a few ideas, but the few ideas he's got, he'll make sure he executes really well. So it's kind of like this really high pitched vocal sound. It sounds like he's perhaps cut up a, a cut up a vocal line from either something he's done or sampled from another song and kind of just cut it up into little bits, like fragmented it. And then he uses it to sort of kind of punctuate the beat that's underneath it. So again, he's doing so much with so little. And uh, two minutes 40 into this track, he switches up styles. And this is a great example of him just bringing in a different style that you're not expecting. Up until now, you've been hearing this electronic alternative ambient song. Now he's bringing in this frantic dance beat that seems to be faded in really slowly, but then comes to the fore quite quickly. It's kind of like this old school jungle style beat, kind of like an early 90s jungle beat. Uh, check out an artist called Nuki or Nuki for more reference. That's N O O K I E. That's a really good reference point for that sort of sound that he's bringing in. Um, if I had to pick, if I had to pick out one other little complaint, and like I said, this is just my opinion, and it's only a small complaint, is sometimes as incredible as the production techniques and styles that he's using are they can sometimes be a little bit distracting sometimes he'll he'll almost put in these kind of quite quite um bombastic and over the top sounds that kind of distract you a little bit and it takes away from the actual song what's going on overall though this album a conversation with myself by oshi is just a patchwork of all these different styles that have been melded together and amalgamated from so many different genres and influences that this guy's come across and he puts them together pretty much seamlessly it all flows together really nicely there's been some good good songs that have been out lately actually um but the one that stood out for me is the new weekend song uh it was the weekend blinding lights which is his second 
new track that he's released recently. The first one he released was one called Heartless. Um, and it sounds like, in terms of the lyrical content, that The Weeknd is coming to terms with fame. It sounds like he's intoxicated in the songs, he's perhaps experiencing drug use, and it's him trying to battle with this fame and being in the spotlight and trying to sort of tap into his his core, really, tap into his human emotions. This song, from the off, press play now, starts with a low, foreboding drone, this deep, dark synth sound. And when I first heard it, I was a bit like, God, where's, where's this song going? It wasn't really what I expected. And it's got these other synths that come in that are kind of swirling around, that are quite washed out. It's almost cinematic. It's, it's, it sounds like the start of like a Jurassic, I don't know, it sounds, not Jurassic Park, what am I chatting? More like, I don't know, like a kind of sci-fi film or something. It does sound really cinematic. But then in comes this drum machine. And as soon as you hear it, you'll literally hear it right at the start of this. It it doesn't it doesn't sound forced or anything, but it straight away is reminiscent of 80s synth pop. It sonically works so well. I really like it. And it's it's like I said, reminiscent of that 80s synth pop. So it took me straight back to aha or depeche mode. It is so 80s. It's really, really nostalgic. I mean, I can't say I was alive during that time, so it's not like, oh, it takes me back to my younger days, but it definitely takes me back to listening to some of those songs. Um, the chorus is incredible. It's so catchy. It's as if you've heard it before. It was genuinely like a familiar, a, a familiar sounding chorus as soon as I heard it. Really love the chorus. And it's got these beautiful synth sounds throughout. Like, amazing synth sounds. They're like shimmering and glowing. It's it's really it's really glitzy. This song. I really like it for that reason. And I love the weekend's voice. He's got such a sexy voice, man. I like it. It's it's very sultry. It's got it's got this real soulful quality to it. I actually think. I don't know if you agree, but I feel like in previous songs, the weekend's kind of got like almost like a Michael Jackson sort of quality to his voice. But it really works. Thank you very much for listening. You've been listening to the Ben Coley podcast. And if you've got anything that you want to recommend to me, please hit me up. I'd love to hear it. I'll catch you next time. The Ben Coley podcast.